Now whether you search for this video yourself or someone sent it to you, chances are you're thinking about getting a new computer. But the question is, can you build it yourself? Yes, you can. And here's how. Welcome to CompTV, a place you can go for all things tech. I'm Lee, and for starters, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons to why you would build your own system. Now for pros, you have a better value for your money, you know what's in it, and you're not gonna have any of that bloatware, all those pre-installed programs you get when you buy a new computer. For the cons, obviously this is gonna take time, the warranties involved are for each individual part, and if anything goes wrong, you have to debug it yourself. So if with these general pros and cons, you still fill up for the task, let's get into the build. As a disclaimer, this guide is going to be pretty general because there's so much hardware out there, it's hard to cover it all. For starters, you need a CPU, a power supply, a motherboard, some RAM, a hard drive or SSD, and a case to fit it all in. Also, there's an optional graphics card. If this PC is for gaming or other hardware intensive applications, you'll probably want to get one. Now you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned an optical drive like a CD drive or a DVD drive. But actually you don't really need those anymore because most software can be downloaded on the internet or installed via a USB. Assuming everything's already been unboxed, you're going to start with your motherboard. I put mine in a cardboard box so as to avoid static electricity. You'll probably want to do this on a hard surface. Then we'll install the CPU by first lifting the lever of the CPU slot. Align the arrow of your CPU with the arrow on your motherboard. Now, go ahead and put the CPU in, being sure not to apply any force on the step. If the pins are lined up correctly, the CPU should slide right in snugly. Finally, pull the lever back down and re-secure it. And congratulations, you just installed your first CPU. Next, grab your CPU cooler, which has pre-applied thermal paste, and lay it on top of the CPU, making sure there's good contact. The notches of the locking mechanism should line up correctly to the orientation of the motherboard as well. First, hook the side without the lever, then fit and lock the opposite side so that the cooler is snapped into place. Feel free to slightly lift the board up by the cooler to make sure it's in correctly. Then, you're going to want to plug in the fan to the CPU fan input that you see on the motherboard. Next, for the RAM, pull up the two arms of the DIMM slot that you're going to put the RAM in, and line up the notch of your RAM to the notch in the slot. If you have dual channel or you're not filling in all the slots, be sure to check the manual for where to place this RAM. And there you have it, the first part is done. Next, grab your case and remove the side panel. Check your case manual to see where to install the standoffs for your motherboard. Mine came pre-installed, but if you have to do it yourself, be careful as an incorrect installation can short your motherboard. Next, go ahead and pop in your IO shield that came with your motherboard. Don't forget this part or else you'll have to remove your motherboard to get it back in. Now align your motherboard to the IO shield and the standoffs and slide it in until the holes for the standoffs align correctly. Now secure your motherboard to the standoffs and pat yourself on the back for making it this far. Really, you deserve it. At this point, it's time we install our case fans. Mine has two, one intake and one exhaust. Refer again to your case manual for the correct method of installation, but in this case, mine comes with no screw fan mounts, so I'll secure them in the mounts and push them into the case. Make sure to check the sides of the fans so you know which way that the fans will blow out air. There should be arrows on the sides of the fan correlating with the airflow. Now this is one of the messier parts, the front panel connectors. These are almost always to be connected at the very bottom of your motherboard. Now my case came with a handy adapter, but even if yours doesn't, this step is pretty easy. But again to be safe, just check your case manual to be sure that you're plugging in the wires correctly. At this point, let's go ahead and install the optional graphics card. Simply pull the single arm of the PCIe slot of your motherboard, line the graphics card up with the back of your case, and slide it in until the arm snaps into place. Now let's install the hard drive. Usually your case will come with a simple mechanism to slide the hard drive in. Mine has a totally not custom bottom mounted hard drive slot. What do you mean double sided tape? And I'll show you what to connect in the next step. Now, last but not least, the power supply. Mount the power supply either to the top or bottom depending on your case, making sure that the fan is able to blow out somewhere. This case has the fan blowing down. Now for connections, first install the 24 pin connector. This is the main power for your motherboard. There's a notch on a couple of these connectors, including this one, that only aligns to one orientation, so use that as your guide when plugging it in. Next, plug in the 4-pin CPU connector. Mine was a 4 plus 4 pin, so I used the perforation to break the two apart. At this point, go ahead and plug in the PCIe 6-pin if you opted for a GPU. Here, let's go ahead and plug in both of our connectors to the back of our hard drive. This is called a SATA connection. These connectors have an L shape, so it should be pretty easy to find them. Find the SATA connections on your motherboard and plug this in in any of the open slots. 
Feel free to tidy up the cables a bit here. You'll see that I zip tied them and put them into some empty space of the case. And there you have it. Replace the side panel, plug in the cord, and press the power button. If you see everything spinning and lighting up, and you get an image when you plug in a monitor, congratulations, you've built your first PC. I hope that during the duration of this video, you've seen how easy it is to build a PC. Feel free to share this video to friends and family you think might need convincing. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more tech content. I'm Lee from CompTV. TV.